seafarers are used to traveling throughout the world. They are aware of the unique life experiences that exist at each destination, including the local health hazards that lurk in the countries that they visit, and they know how to keep safe. Suddenly this year, a new deadly health hazard has emerged that is also traveling the world. The novel coronavirus or COVID-19. There is no cure or vaccine available yet to combat this deadly virus. Immediately, international organizations related to the shipping industry issued guidelines to increase personal safety for seafarers and help prevent the spread of this virus globally. Governments the world over have issued severe travel restrictions, closed borders and instructed their populations to stay isolated at home, with very few necessary exceptions. So, what does it all mean for you, the seafarer? You are being acutely hit by these travel restrictions in two ways. You will have difficulty traveling to your ship in accordance with your scheduled tour of duty and you might be prevented from taking home leave as scheduled crew changes are being interrupted, in some ports prohibited, and you may find it difficult to arrange onward travel home. These travel restrictions are necessary to prevent the spread of the virus, but despite that, the death toll has risen to over 100,000 and it continues to rise exponentially. In this situation, it is extremely important for all seafarers to have regular contact with their family members via the internet as and when possible, to find out how they are coping with this serious situation and, at the same time, to reassure them of your own well-being. It is also important not to exaggerate when communicating with your family and friends. If for any reason you are prevented from leaving your ship, it is most important to maintain a positive attitude despite the frustration you might rightly feel. But seafarers are resilient people. You know how to deal with spending long periods away from home. You already know how to deal with periods of boredom on board. This is the time to draw on your well-developed mental strength. At such a time as this, a much more frequent interaction with your fellow seafarers, such as social chat, game playing, or more importantly, arrange sports and physical exercises will help. While on board ship, you must be aware of the possibility of contamination by this virus. So what is this virus and how can you prevent yourself from being infected by it? The coronavirus, or COVID-19, is a mutation of the SARS virus and is officially described as SARS-CoV-2. It resides in bats and is believed to have mutated to pangolins. Now, it has mutated again to infect humans. To illustrate the severity of this virus, according to recent estimates, it has a mortality rate of over 10 times that of seasonal flu. The most likely means by which COVID-19 can be carried on board ships include visits by any person external to the ship, such as port authority members and head office staff, interaction with stevedores and other shore staff during cargo operations, crew changes in port, delivery of provisions and spare parts, visits by maintenance technicians, and crew members visiting contaminated shore facilities. It is important to know how this virus spreads on board ship. It can be spread from person to person and by touching already infected surfaces, such as door handles, handrails, tools, equipment, frequently used surfaces and toilet seats. If you then use the same contaminated hand to touch your face, eyes, nose and mouth, you will be infected. Person-to-person -person contamination occurs when someone, already infected, coughs or sneezes, spraying tiny droplets into the air, carrying the virus towards others situated within two meters of them. As in the early stages you may not realize you are infected, all seafarers need to cover their mouths and noses whenever they cough or sneeze. 
Ideally, a tissue should be used for this purpose, after which the tissue must be discarded into a waste bin. If no tissue is available, you should sneeze or cough into a flexed elbow. The COVID-19 virus can survive on hard surfaces for up to 72 hours, but simple disinfectants, such as bleach or high alcohol-based gels and soap and water can kill it. For that reason, a first line of defense must be the frequent cleaning of all communally touched surfaces and objects, particularly in the galley. To reduce the chance of contamination further, you need to wash your hands frequently with soap and water. This should take at least 20 seconds on each occasion. One way to assess the time is to hum the song Happy Birthday twice. If soap and water is not immediately available, you should clean your hands thoroughly with an alcohol-based gel or sanitizer. So, what are the symptoms of the COVID-19 disease? The coronavirus attacks the lungs and the upper respiratory tract. The incubation period for this infection is estimated to be anything from 2 to 14 days. For that reason, even if no one on board displays any symptoms of the infection, you must still follow rigidly the preventive measures described here. In addition, it is most important to realize that someone may be infected but displays no symptoms at all. The first main symptoms are a raised temperature generally over 37.8 degrees centigrade or 100 degrees Fahrenheit and a new persistent dry cough. A dry cough is one which does not mobilize any phlegm or fluid. Other symptoms may include a severe headache, fatigue and difficulty in breathing. Some survivors have also reported the temporary loss of taste and smell if you become infected, you must wear a mask to avoid infecting others through respiratory droplets in the air. In any case, it is highly recommended at this time that a minimum distance of one meter between colleagues be maintained and over two meters wherever possible. Whether on shore or on board ship, everyone should look out for each other. If an unfortunate crew member on board starts displaying any of the symptoms, such as persistent dry cough, or a raised temperature, or unexplained fatigue, and the ship's medical care provider confirms that an infection may exist, the sufferer should be isolated in a designated cabin. The captain should immediately get radio medical advice and inform the company. The severity of the infection should then be assessed and supportive care provided, including fluids, oxygen, and assistance with breathing difficulties. The captain should ensure that a maritime declaration of health is prepared and the next port authority is notified. This should include a request for medical assistance. At the same time, the captain or a designated officer should immediately assess the impact on the duty rotor based on the sufferer's function on board. In this dangerous environment, you should always remember the following. If your scheduled tour of duty is interrupted in any way, consult your company's human resource or crewing department. When on board ship, contact your family members often via the internet ship's telephone or radio telephony to find out how they are coping with this unprecedented situation and to reassure them of your own well-being. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water or use an alcohol-based sanitizer if available. If infected, you must wear a mask when others are around you and promptly isolate yourself in a designated cabin. Always maintain a minimum distance of one meter between colleagues and over two meters wherever possible. The duration of these circumstances is currently unknown. The often changing and complex measures taken by each country can create uncertainty. It is therefore very important that you take care of your well-being and maintain good mental health during this crisis. Prepare yourself for any issues that may arise from this situation. Eat healthy food, ensure you get enough rest, and limit your consumption of alcohol and cigarettes, especially when under stress. Get plenty of exercise and be sociable and supportive towards your fellow seafarers on board. In these unprecedented times, 
patience, understanding and consideration for others are required more than ever to combat this deadly virus. Rest assured that you are not forgotten. Ship owners and others are working hard to get you home or, if you are starting a new contract, getting you to your next ship. Additional helpful information is available from ICEONE, the International Seafarers Welfare and Assistance Network at www.seafarerswelfare.org and at www.steamshipmutual.com.